So here's part two of 2.1, the properties of exponents. So now we're going to do some mixed practice. And so we're going to incorporate some of these rules into to multiple rules into single problems. At first, not, not so much, but as we kind of get a little bit further into it. So you'll notice it says give all our answers with only positive exponents. Okay, so these first couple ones really aren't too bad. These are just basic ones. And so negative 2 to the power of 6, since this is an even power, really you can just look at this as 2 to the power of 6. You know, if you do, great. If you don't, that's fine. You'll maybe just cut down the chance that you accidentally get a negative result. So let's see, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And here we go. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And then we got to multiply by 4 one more time. And that will give us the 64 right there. Okay, so let's see our next one. We have a, our exponent is going to be 0. Okay, so your base right here, even though it's negative... Negative 3 to the power of 0, that's going to equal 1. So that goes back to our property, it's 0 exponent property. Okay, So your base, positive, negative, whatever, as long as it's not 0, you're fine. Okay, Now 10 is going to be a little different. So yes, it's negative 9 to the power of 0, but it doesn't have parentheses. And so we talked about this in the last video. And what that means is that negative actually gets applied after the exponent. So the exponent's going to make that equal 1. And so then negative 1 times positive 1, so we actually end up with a negative 1 result. So be a little careful there. That's just more about a syntax right there, okay? So you just have to understand that that negative is applied after the fact. All right. So moving on down, here we are. So on our next one, so we have a negative exponent, so you just have to take the reciprocal and the exponent becomes positive you know you could leave it like this but typically if you know the if the base and the power is somewhat of a small number you might as well just go ahead and complete it so one uh four to the power of three is four times four times four so let's see four times four is 16 then times four is going to be uh, 64. so we'll go ahead and put that right there so this becomes one over 64. It's going to be 1 over 64. Not negative 64. That's a common answer. But 1 over 64. Okay. On 13, let's see. 2 to the second power times 2 to the third power. So we're going to add that together to 2 to the fifth power. Okay. And then go ahead and apply the exponent, which means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. Make sure... All right, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, bring down that last 2 right there, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. Then our next one, we have power to a power, so this can become 2 to the power of 6, and so really the only difference between 2 to the power of 5 and 2 to the power of 6, you're just going to multiply by 2 again, so that one's going to be 64 right there. So I kind of piggybacked off of the previous question. Okay, and then on 17, we have the quotient rule. So we're going to have 2 to the power of 8 take away 4 because we have the same base on bottom. Subtract the exponent right there. So we're going to end up with 2 to the power of 4. Okay, and so let's see, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So we'll end up with 4 times 4, which is 16. All right. And then on 19, I've got 3 to the negative 3 times 3 to the understood power of 1. So we'll go ahead and add that together. So negative 3 plus 1. So I end up with 3 to the negative 2 power. But remember, no negative exponents. So i got to take the reciprocal, so it becomes 1 over 3 squared. And then 3 squared is just 3 times 3, which is 9. So 1 over 9 is my final result there. 
Okay, on 21, I'm going to have 2 to the 3rd minus 7, right? Quotient rule going on here. So I get 2 to the negative 4 power. And then I'll go ahead and take the reciprocal to get a positive power of 4 on bottom. And so let's see. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So let's see. I'll get a 4 and then another 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So I'll end up with 1 over 16 right there. Okay. So you'll notice these first couple, we didn't really have any variables. So now we're going to throw in some variables here. But the, the rules don't really change. We want to just go ahead and simplify this with only positive exponents. Just one positive exponents. So what you want to realize here is x to the negative 2 times, and then you have a y right there. So they're not, you know, the y is not attached to the x. That so has a positive power of 1. So I am going to go ahead. This is going to basically flip underneath. So I'm going to have a y on top, and then the x goes on bottom, and the exponent becomes positive 2. Then right here on 25, let's see, I have x to the power of 0 times y to the power of 5. So right here, um, the directions probably said should have had something about assume all variables are not zeros, like non, you know, they're not going to be zeros. So assuming that x is some number other than 0, this would turn into a 1. 1 times y to the power of 5 will be y to the power of 5. So if you get a problem like this on your homework, you'll probably see some verbiage saying assume variables are, you know, positive or assume variables are not zero. A lot of times I just say assume they're positive. But anyways, basically, there'll be something in there about, you know, it's not zero because we don't zero to a zero power. You won't, we won't ever do anything like that. Okay, on our next 127 we're going to use the product rule because you have the common base and you're multiplying so you're going to add those so it should just be x to the power of 10. all right moving on okay another product rule so i'm going to add this together so i'm going to have x to the negative 5 plus 10. so when you add that together it's just x to the power of 5. On 31, I have the power rule this time. You multiply because what this is saying is they are doing x to the third, x to the third, x to the third. You're doing it seven times, right? And you can do it that way if you really want to. But what would probably be easier is to do the power rule where you just multiply. And so 3 times 7 is 21. So x to the 21st power. So we'll do the same thing on 33. So I have x to the negative 5 um, raised to a power of 3. So power to a power. So x to the negative 15th power. And then we'll go ahead and make that positive by taking the reciprocal. And so you'll have x to the positive 15, but it's um, under 1. So 1 over x to the 15th power. Okay, quotient rule here. So let's see, x to the 14th minus 7 equals x to the 7th power. Not too bad. Okay, right here, this looks almost the same, but we have a negative 7 on bottom. So it's going to be x to the 14th power minus a negative 7. So actually, you have double negatives. So that's actually going to become x to the 14th plus 7. We'll add that together, and we'll get x to the 21st power right there. So my denominator ended up being negative. Another way to look at this, I don't want to confuse y'all, but another way you can look at this is if this flips up, it would have become positive. So you'd have x to the 14th times x to the positive 7th power. So if you flip it up to make the exponent positive, you, you get the same answer. So sometimes it's, it's, it's good to look at these from different perspectives. And I'm not trying to confuse you, but the... The more angles you can kind of approach your problem, the more tools you have, the better off you're going to be. And that's true for 39 also. So if we're going to follow the power rule, the way you would do the power rule, it's everything that's broken up by multiplication or division receives this outside power. 
So this is going to become 8 squared times x to the power of 3 squared. And so 8 squared is 64, 8 times 8. And then power to the power you multiply, that's going to be x to the power of 6. And there you go, you're done there. Okay? Another way you could have looked at this, and once again, I'm not trying to confuse you, but you could have broken it up into, you know, 8x to the third times 8x to the third, because it's a power of 2, right? And 8 times 8 is 64, x to the third times x to the third, you add them, because when you multiply, you add, you get the same answer either way. So, okay. Looking at our next one, let's see, I've got negative 4 over x to the third power. So I need to figure out where do I want to put the negative because it doesn't go in both places. And so I typically always put it with the, the numerator. So I'm going to put it, the negative directly with the 4 just to kind of figure out where I'm going to place that. And now I'm going to cube both of these. So I'm going to have negative 4 to the third power over x to the third power. Now, negative 4 to the third power is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. And negative times a negative, that's positive 16. And then times negative 4 would be negative 64. So that's going to be my numerator, negative 64. And then x to the third power, well, that's just going to be x to the third power. And that's my answer. Okay, looking at 43, let's see, I've got negative 3x squared, y the fifth, all raised to the power of 2. So that power's got to be applied to all three. So negative 3 is going to get squared, x squared is going to get squared, and y to the fifth is going to get squared. So they all get squared. So let's see, negative 3, the second power, negative times a negative is positive 9. Uh, when you are going to do the power rule right here, so that'll be x to the fourth. Uh, power rule here, that'll be y to the tenth. There you go. On our next problem, we're multiplying those together. And so we had a problem like this in my first video. If you want to, if you can do it in your head, great. If not, just realize all, none of this stuff is attached. You can move it around. So you can put the three times two and you can put the x to the 4th and x to the 7th together and kind of focus on each part individually. So 3 times 2 is 6. The other part is the product rule, so you add the exponents, which would be x to the 11th power. Okay? And like I said, if you, went, if you were to go directly here, I'm fine with that. If you can see that, you know, if you don't need to do the commutative property, that's okay. But it's there if you want to kind of break it up into um, smaller steps. Okay, let's see. Our next one's pretty similar, except we just have more variables. We have uh, we have an x and a y going on here. So, like I said, if you want to, if you want to try to do it the fast track way, that's fine. Go ahead and try it. I'm going to go ahead and break it up again just to kind of put it in smaller steps. So I'm going to put the negative 9 times negative 2 next to each other. And then, let's see, I'm going to put the x to the 3rd times x to the 6th next to each other. And now I'm going to put the y times y the fourth next to each other. And let's see, negative 9 times negative 2, double negative, so that will become positive 18. And then let's see, we're going to add exponents, so that will be 9. And same thing here, that has an understood 1, so that will be y to the fifth. So 18x to the ninth, y to the fifth. Okay, we're going to start looking at some quotient ones that are going to be a little bit more than we've seen thus far. And so you can kind of do them like the multiplication ones where if you're comfortable, you can go directly from here to your answer. You can kind of, okay, negative 9 times negative 2 is 18, the x is, and so on. If you're comfortable with that, great. But once again, with the division ones, you can kind of break them up into smaller problems. And so what I mean by that is you can kind of look at 8 divided by 2, and then separate it with the x to the 20th over the x to the 4th power. And you can kind of take each one, each part individually. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then the other part, you're supposed to subtract, right? Hopefully we've got the quotient rule um, down somewhat. So I'm supposed to subtract that 4 from 20. And so I'd get x to the power of 
16. It's, oh, there we go. 16. And that's my answer. And then if you want to just kind of write it all together without the multiplication sign, that's fine. If you want to leave it the multiplication sign there, that's fine too. Okay, so I've got some more of these quotient ones here. Okay, this one's a little bit more in depth, um, but it's it's the same idea. Let's break it up into three small problems. So I think we can all do 25 divided by ne uh, negative 5, and then we're going to do a to the 13th divided by a to the 2nd, and then we'll do b to the 4th divided by b to the 3rd. So we're going to look at each part individually. 25 divided by negative 5, that will give us a negative 5. Let me see, I'll change my colors. Um, so here we do the quotient rule and subtract that 2 from 13 and get 11. Subtract the 3 from 4 and we'll get b to the 1 power. Really, you don't need to put the power of 1. If you do, I don't know if the computer would count it wrong or not. If it were an exam or something like that, I would go back and give you full credit for that. But, you know, if it's a power of 1, it's understood. It's not absolutely uh, necessary to have that there. Okay, uh, 53, this one looks maybe even a little bit easier. So let's see, 14 over 7 times b to the 7th over b to the 14th. So 14 divided by 7 is 2. Then here, when you subtract the, the 14, let me show my work. So we're going to have 7 take away 14. So you're actually going to end up with 2b to the negative power of 7. And so then what you're going to do is take the reciprocal. Of that basically is going to flip underneath. So you're going to get 2 over b to the power of positive 7. All right. A couple more left here. I think these are the last four. Okay, so... Here I have the negative 2 exponent on the outside of 4x cubed. You can flip it now or flip it later. And so it really doesn't make a difference. I'll go ahead and just flip it now. So this will be 1 over 4x cubed all raised to a positive 2 power now. Okay, so see this was understood as being over 1. And so I took the reciprocal and there we are. So now I have to square everything. Well, 1 to the second power is 1 times 1 is 1. Then 4, i got to square the 4. That would give me a 16, right? And then 3 to the third power squared. And maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and show this step in case I don't want to lose anybody here. So see, I have to square this. So I'm going to have power to a power. And so that will become x to the power of 6. So 1 over 16x to the power of of six i was starting to kind of take a couple sh shortcuts there and i probably shouldn't do that i don't want to i don't want to confuse anybody if anybody is seeing shortcuts that's great and you're welcome to take them okay let's see 57 now that kind of looks more like the ones we were just working on so let's see i'm going to break this up so let's see 24 over 32 Let's see, x to the third over x to the power of 7. And let's see, y to the power of 5 over y to the power of negative 9. Okay, so looking at our numbers here, 24 over 32, let's see. What can I, let's see, it's not, they're both even, so I could divide 2 into them, but I can divide more than 2. I think I can divide 4. So let's see, 4 goes into 24 6 times, and 4 goes into 32 8 times. Actually, I, can go, I could even go further, because 6 over 8 can reduce by a factor of 2. So I was a little off there. I can actually reduce it more. So 6 divided by 2 would be a 3, and 8 divided by 2 would be a 4. So that reduces down to 3 over 4. And so if you recognize that I should have done 8, divide top and bottom by 8, that's great. If not, you can do it in smaller chunks if you want. Just make sure you simplify it as much as possible. And so I got down to 3 over 4. Okay, so here we're going to 
I'll go ahead and show my work here. We're going to subtract. So I'm going to have, let's see, 3, take away 7. And then over here, I'm going to have y to the 5th minus a negative 9. And so we'll go ahead and clean that up. So let's see. Move down here. All right. Let me make a little bit more room for this. One second. All right, I gave myself a little bit more room to, to navigate here. So let's see. We've got the, oops, 3 over 4 right here. And then when I subtract, let's see, that will become x to the negative 4 because I have 3, but I'm taking away 7. And then here I do have the double negative, so this will actually become 5 plus 9, which will become y the 14th. So... Now what I have to do is I have to fix that negative exponent, okay? So let's see, that'll give me 3 over 4 times 1 over x to the positive power of 4. And then I have y the 14th, and I'm going to go ahead and just put that over 1. And I'm doing that so that now I can kind of clean this up and bring everything back together here. And so I'm just going to kind of go by multiplying across. So 3 times 1 times y to the 14th. So that would be 3y to the 14th. And then 4 times x to the 4th times 1. So that's going to be 4x to the 4th. And so that is my final answer. So that one, that one was a little challenging, right? It wasn't too bad, but there was quite a bit going on. And so I would just break it up into smaller pieces. Okay, 59, I'm going to kind of approach that one like the one up above we completed. I'm going to go ahead and take the reciprocal to start with. And so then what happens is my exponent becomes a positive 2. And then now I just have to go through and square everything. So this would become y squared, 5 squared, and x to the power of 3 squared. And then go ahead and simplify where we can. So y squared can't do much about that. 5 squared, that'll be 25, and then power to a power, that's going to become x to the power of 6. And there we go. Okay, and then 61 here. Let's see, this is our last one. It, look, it looks really bad. It's not going to be that bad, though. What we want to do is simplify inside before we apply the power of 3. So before we apply the exponent there, we want to go ahead and see what we can clean up inside first. So let's see. we got negative 15 over 5. we got a the 4th over a the 10th. And we got b the 2nd over b b to the negative 3 power, all raised to the power of 3. Okay, so let's see. Negative 15 divided by 5 will be a negative 3. And then here, when you do the quotient rule, you're going to subtract 10 from 4, and so that would become a negative 6. And then here, when you subtract negative 3 from 2, you're subtracting negative, so it actually becomes addition. So that'll be b to the 5th. Okay, and so I didn't quite show all my work there, but you can kind of work through that if you'd like, just to verify, but we should be good there. Okay, now I can go ahead and fix the negative now, or I can fix it after I apply the power of 3. I think I'll go ahead and apply the power now. It doesn't, it won't make a difference. You could go ahead and take care of the negative now if you really wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and apply that now. So let's see, negative 3 cubed, a the negative 6 cubed, and b to the 5th cubed. So let's see, negative 3 to the third power. Let's see, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Let's see, negative times a negative is positive 9. And then multiplied by negative 3 is negative 27. So I'm going to get a negative 27 right there. And then power to a power, you multiply that, and you'll get a raised to the negative power of 18. And then here you power to a power, you multiply b to the power of 15. And then the last thing we really have to do here 
is take care of my negative exponents. So let's see, we have negative 27. Then this is going to flip to 1 over a to the positive 18th power. And then we have b to the 15th over 1. And I'm going to put that negative 27 over 1. And once again, that's so that now I can kind of clean this up by pushing this all back together, multiplying going across on top. And that would end up with negative 27b to the 15th power over a to the 18th power. And there we are. Okay, so that's a, that's a lot of practice, but that's, that's honestly what you need for properties of exponents is lots of practice. So when you're doing your homework, there's quite a, fit, quite a few problems there, but you can always do similar example if you want to get more problems, okay? So, um, all right, so like I said, these, these properties of exponents, you'll see them throughout the semester, especially when we get into college algebra.